Hello there and welcome to another walkthrough of a Commodore 16 game and today I'm going to go through starter chess. Now I remember starter chess because it was in the pack of four games that my Commodore came with and so therefore it has a, uh, a lot of good memories for me. So let's play this really. It's just a game of chess. You know, we're used to the idea of computerized chess, but um, you know, in those days, it was something uh, that was at um, at the cutting edge. You know, grandmasters didn't always um, beat computers. I don't think it was for something like 1997 before uh, computers began being more powerful than. Than grandmasters. I mean, now you can have something in your pocket that will beat um, a grandmaster. You know, just your mobile phone running a chess engine will do that. But uh, you know, back in the eighties, this was all uh, a new thing. So it's quite interesting. So um, I've got this running in in warp mode because the computer does take a long time to play its moves work out the next move so rather than me rambling on I thought I'd do that the um, other issue is that these pieces are not particularly clear and well rendered it's very difficult to actually work out uh, sometimes what the pieces are um, I've played a lot of chess programs over the years and um, you know there are programs for the Commodore 64 like Battle Chess that are very attractive and the fact that the Commodore 16 had more colors and more options surprises me so um, yeah it's uh, it can be a bit awkward to work out the difference with the pieces um, I personally enjoy playing chess on the computer I, I play games on chess.com I wouldn't say that I'm particularly good at playing chess but um, I have an interest in in both playing chess and following chess uh, online as well. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to at least give the computer a game, whether I actually get as far as completing this game before the video finishes, um, I'm not so not so sure. So we'll see what the, uh, the computer is going to do here. So I'm just basically putting all my pawns on the board, getting a nice shield, um, waiting to see what the computer does. I'm not particularly big fan of the sprite for the um, for the knight. It looks more like a wolf, but uh, you know <laughs> who's picky. So I'm just going to move my queen um, because the uh, on b7 there's a, a weak pawn. So I'll be interested to see what um, the computer does with this. Um, it's quite interesting the history of the Commodore 16 and um, despite the fact I spent many hours playing one the Commodore 16 was a bit of an anomaly it was released after the Commodore 64 to replace the VIC-20 but by the time it was released uh, there was all sorts of mixed thinking the, the reason that the Commodore 16 came into being sort of disappeared because it was competing against machines that um, that, that, that were no longer there, some American machines, and the the whole hierarchy of um, Commodore had gone by the time uh, the C16 was released. There was actually three machines, um, the Plus 4, the C116, and the C16. And the Plus 4 had inbuilt software and more RAM. The C116 was a bit like a Spectrum. It had the, the the funny keys and then the Commodore 16 was very similar to the 64 and how it looked and that was the machine that I used. It did well in Europe and it did well in certain places uh, but the, the 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 machine itself just was completely out of time. People wanted uh, more memory, more colours, more sprites and they released something with less which sort of didn't make much sense to um to to the buying public 
plus the biggest killer was the fact that it wasn't compatible with Commodore 64 games. It wasn't co- um, compatible with most of the hardware either, so it was a bit of a bit of a sort of an anomaly. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting um, interesting story. Its main place it was successful was in Hungary. It hung around for a good ten years after release. Uh, I think they just dumped all the stock <laughs> over there. Um, Commodore itself closed in 1994, so that tells you how long the company lasted after this. But um, uh, it's it's you know it hung around, and there are some good games. Um, I did a lot of programming and learnt to cut my teeth on them. And to be honest, my day job today revolves around programming and computing and um, I uh, I wouldn't be doing my day job if it hadn't been for the Commodore 16 or the Commodore 64 as I as I later started to use. So there is that as well. So yeah. So how we're we doing? I'm just having a look at this. I'm just starting to edge ahead now in the game. I'm going to just exchange queens. It's always a good tactic in chess if you're in the ascendancy to um, exchange off, especially if you just want a quick game, you know, if you're not too bothered about big tactical battles, just exchange off, you know, if you're up um, and I'm up at least a pawn, probably two pawns um, that's the idea as well and I'm looking to put that knight on c7 cause a bit of trouble the, the computer should move the, the king and it does stop me from from doing that, which is um, which is quite right. So uh, I'm just going to continue developing my uh, my pawns. So G two, G three. Yeah, there was no real sort of interface in terms of how you actually move these pieces. Now we're used to you know using mice and other things. Um, you had to uh, type in the letters. I recently played Colossus Chess on the Commodore sixty four, and that was so far advanced at this you know you just had to put in the, the the end square and the computer would work out what piece you were actually trying to move and it had all sorts of sophisticated levels of things in your you know your setup you could um, you know redo moves and all sorts of things it's just um it's just a different different piece of software so yeah it was um it was very impressive so the um the black pieces are just falling into a little bit of a trap here because um, although they're threatening my knight, I can move this bishop now with check. And um, uh, if it goes to plan, I should move, lose a bit more material. But yeah, so they move the move that out of the way, which is um, you know an interesting move. So again, this is where um, quite a popular thing in chess is to do what's called a fork. So my next move is to put the knight onto c7. So that's b5, c7. Sorry, not to say c7, sorry, um, to d6. Sorry, we get, we're spoiled by using the mice for everything. <laughs> and that means obviously that I'm uh, causing trouble on, um, you know, there's all sorts of exchanges and things I can do a, a nasty sort of uh, Put my knight onto f7, which will lose the rook straight away, or I can do something nasty with the uh, the bishop, the bishop on h3. Um, but I am going to uh, just do the obvious thing, which is the fork, which is d6 to f7. f7. So in check, has to move the king there to threaten me, and then um, you know I can. I can either take the rook or I can um, just put the king back in check again. Um, I will probably just put the king back in check again because my bishop on h3 is not defended, so it's not the best move in the world. So I shall just do that now. So that's um, f. Seven D six. So I have to put them back into check, and then uh, the king moves back, and then I can now take that bishop, and there isn't really a reply for the um, 
for the computer. So, I mean, it's it's okay. It's fun, I suppose, in 1984 or whenever it was this release. This was, you know, relatively groundbreaking, but um, I don't really think it has much replay value in this day and age, you know, 2019 when this has been recorded, because we can just download a mobile phone app that will just blow people away. And obviously with the internet, you can do things like um, cooperative play, uh, you know, play against friends, play against people you've never even, uh, you know, played against before. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. So, um, you know, it, it's useful for knowing what it's like. I'm also quite a big um, fan of the 1K chess challenge. So that's a, a sort of competition where people try to see how little code they can use to create a chess game. So uh, the, 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 it used to be the 1K challenge. I think the record is something like 483 bits, and a bit is like a letter. So if you can imagine writing a whole chess game using 4, 483 letters, that's just um, just absolutely amazing. But uh, it, it just goes to show how far um, computers have come and what they can do. So uh, yeah, <laughs> um, you yeah, know this this takes up slightly more than one k. But actually, to be honest, it probably doesn't do. Um, you know, it it probably doesn't take up that much more than one k because once you've done the graphics, the buffer for the the characters because all these characters will be custom uh, fonts. There won't be a lot of um, room left as well, and. Yeah, I do remember playing a version of this um, where if you got yourself down to the other side and you wanted to uh, promote your pieces to exchange a pawn for a queen, it would crash. So, you know, and this game does, does things like castling, which not all of the early computer chess games did. So it's quite interesting. But um, yeah, I am absolutely massively ahead now. He's about to lose uh, a rook. And yeah, it's just, um, you know, it's just not looking very good for the computer. I'm just going to play a few moves, see what I can do to actually um, uh, put the computer in checkmate. If this was a human player, they would have um, they would have resigned by now just purely because of the, um, you know, just the amount that they are behind. So um yeah, it's quite interesting, really. So uh, just play a couple more moves, and then I will sign off. Let's see what the computer is going to do here. Need to get rid of one of them knights if it's doing the, the right thing. Although I suspect it's going to take my pawn on b4. Oh no, no, I was wrong. Um, but now you see I can start. This is the problem now that the computer's got is that um, my pawns are in such a good position that I can, I'm, you know, I've got past pawns, which means I can get them to the uh, the other side of the board, as I say, and then you know get them promoted. They're running out of decent squares to put the knights because of the way that the pieces are. Yeah, you've got the rook in the top right hand corner. Their rook is just not doing anything at all. I've not even had to bring mine out yet. And you know, normally in a chess game, you would look to castle and to, to, to bring out pieces, but um, yeah, all, all sorts of trouble now. So I can take the pawn on c5. That's the one good thing about this game is that um, you can uh, it teaches you all the different squares. You know, I'm just such a <laughs> I'm used to just doing uh, you know point and click or pressing a screen, whatever you want to do. But yeah, so as you can see, it's not um, it's not a particularly uh, sophisticated engine, but it's a nice nice bit of nostalgia, and uh, it's amazing what they could do with you know 16k's worth of memory and when you think about it it was probably about 12 because they needed 4k just to load the, the basic the rom so yeah okay thank you very much if you enjoyed the video do a like um any suggestions leave a comment and please subscribe